The man in the corner stares at you. Creep, creep, creep. He moves towards you. Run is the only thing going through your head right now. But no matter how hard you try, you're stuck to your bed, waiting as an intruder comes for you. Close your eyes. One, two, three. The footsteps halt. Is he gone? You open your eyes and you're face to face. Possibilities run through your head. Am I going to die? Suddenly, you feel a tingle in your hand. Now, you tell yourself. You flick your arm to turn on the light. The intruder's gone. You're safe. But was someone really there? Or are you starting to go crazy? About 10% of the population will have or have already had a horrible nightmare like this. But why? Today, let's talk about the terror that is sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is caused by a combination of factors. But before we dive into the deep end, let's start off simple with sleep. Sleep can be broken down into NREM, non-rapid eye movement, and REM, rapid eye movement. NREM is static sleep, where your heart is slowed and you remain still. It is during REM sleep, however, when our most vivid dreams occur to prevent you from hurting yourself or others during your happiest dreams or your worst nightmares. Your brain temporarily paralyzes you. Using the pons and the ventromedial medulla, our brain sends out the neurotransmitters GABA and glycine to inhibit motor neurons in the spinal cord, stopping any movement. Sometimes you wake up before REM is finished. All of your senses are conscious, but your body is frozen. This is what we call perceptual activation and it's why you're forced to endure infernal hallucinations. The demons, abductors, and mutants that come for you in the peak of the night are there for a different reason. The amount of neural connections within an area of our body causes the representation of the monstrous cortical homunculus, whose proportions are related to neural connections rather than the physical size. Normally, this creature stays hidden away pushed into the farther corners of our minds. But conflicting signals between afferent neurons, which are neurons sending signals toward the central nervous system, and efferent neurons, which are neurons sending signals away from the central nervous system, let this monster escape. Another culprit is the mirror neuron system, or MNS. When we decide to move, neurons in the V5 area of the premotor cortex will fire. However, 10% of these neurons will fire simply by watching another person. The MNS is heavily dependent on the prefrontal cortex and sensory feedback, and together, this causes the feeling that you're looking at someone's interactions while you're lying in bed. Disturbances of these interactions can lead to the manifestation of an intruder, abductor, or a monster. But perhaps knowing that it's all a dream makes these creatures of the night less scary. Or perhaps, it makes them even worse. 